Hey everybody, Jim Sammons here and welcome to the Kayak Fishing Show live. As always, brought to you by all our great sponsors scrolling across the bottom there. Uh, particularly, these Tuesday shows have been brought to you by our good friend Patrick Zabiel and a band of anglers. Uh, for anybody who's new to these shows, we always like to remind you that we are doing these shows every Tuesday and Thursday. Tuesdays, we are airing uh, the Jackson Kayak years of episodes and on Thursdays, the older stuff, the ocean kayak years. And uh, hopefully we're going to be able to start shooting new stuff soon. You know, uh, start shooting for season 12, 12 seasons on the air. Pretty amazing. Um, there's a lot of TV shows that never made it that long. So I'm pretty stoked about that. So again, every Tuesday, we have our good friend Patrick Sabeel join us. And he talks about uh, one of the brand of brands of his lures under a band of anglers. So uh, lots of information. But what we ask, of course, is that you bring us those questions, comments, thumbs up, uh, shares, anything like that. You can help us get a greater reach, which helps us bring these sponsors on and helps us shoot more shows. Uh, Patrick, uh, through a band of anglers dot com. Uh, remember that uh, during these shows for the first 24 hours, 20% discount using that discount discount code, right? I'm really terrible at this. Discount code right there. You can get 20% discount for the next 24 hours and then 15% discount for the remainder of the week uh, using that other code. So, uh, and it'll be on the brand of lures that he's talking about for the day. Also, at the end of the six weeks, all the episodes that he's done, Patrick is going to hand pick $150 worth of lures for your type of fishing. You know, we'll get on an email with you guys and put you together and he will pick out what he thinks is going to be the best lures for you. So, but again, in order for that to happen for you, you need to give us that thumbs up. You need to make some comments. You need to share it with your friends because that really, really helps. Got a couple comments, people saying hello. Uh, Brody Bernstein, how you doing? Watching from Kayak Fishing Tales. And it's another reminder I like to give you. Kayak Fishing Tales is our YouTube channel. I highly recommend that you, uh, if you want to see these, that you subscribe to Kayak Fishing Tales. You're much more likely to get notified of the videos when they come up through YouTube than you are through Facebook. Facebook is just kind of stepping on us and crushing us lately. So uh, if you go over to Kayak Fishing Tales, please remember to uh, hit that subscribe button. Uh, we got Nicholas saying, hello, how you doing, man? And also always giving that a band of anglers dot com. Uh, Julio Cesar Araya Sancho, uh, Pura Vida. Uh, I hope you enjoyed your trip to beautiful. I, I love Costa Rica. And uh, we're going to be talking a lot more about that. After Patrick's done, we got our good friend Esteban Gutierrez coming on from Blackbeard Fishing Company, and we're going to be airing the episode that we did to Aguila de Osa. Um, so very, very cool. Anthony, thanks for joining us for the first time. I appreciate it. Dave Fowler, that goatee is getting pretty big. Uh, yeah, it is. This is my, my um, haven't been able to travel uh, goatee and hair. My hair is as long as it's been in years and years. And I think my goatee is probably longer than it's ever been. So once I can travel again, I'm going to cut it off. But right now it's just like, I don't care. Uh, Chris Funk, how are you, man? Um, working the night shift. God, I don't have to do that anymore. I used to start work when I drove trucks or Pepsi. I started to work at three o'clock in the morning. Uh, Jamie's showing up from New South Wales, Australia. Thanks for joining us. And Jose Carlos, uh, I can't even say your name, um, from Costa Rica. Greetings and a big hug. Uh, you know, like I said, we love Costa Rica and we're going to see a lot more of it. And that's why we've gone back so many times. So with no further ado, let's bring up my good buddy, Patrick Sabil. How are you? I am doing fantastic as always. Uh, nice to see you again. And uh, thanks to everybody who's joining us today. Yeah, so uh, today, and I'm going to pop this up here just real quick. We're going to talk about your, is it Zorus? Yep. The Zorus line of lures that a band of anglers is bringing in. And uh, give us the rundown, how to fish them, what's so special about these lures. And uh, if, you want, if you want me to zoom in on any of these, Patrick, just let me know. But uh, yeah, I'm sure. give you the... I, have, I have some to, to show right here. 
the solo stage. It is yours. So let's hear all about the Zorus line <laughs> of lures from a band of anglers. So actually, that's a brand that's a little bit different than the, the five of our brands because this is not a brand that a band of anglers owns. I didn't design those very lures. Actually, uh, this is a very famous high-end uh, topwater lure, I mean, lure brand in Europe. And those two lures, uh, the Pachinko here and the Asturi right here, actually have been the two best-selling topwater lures for the past 10 years in Western Europe. So when, when you have two lures that, uh, that have been at such level of sales, well, there's a reason. And the reason, hopefully, is not a matter of marketing. It's a matter of efficiency. So uh, that, that brand, Exorus, came... Um, as I say, more than 10 years ago, and they came with those bait uh, because there were a lot of people loving top water action there, right? I mean, I, I guess most people who are joining us today love also top water. I mean, who don't really like to see a huge explosion on the top? So uh, top water in Europe is quite popular in salt water for the sea bass, which I mean, for those of you who don't know, the European sea bass is relative to the striped bass looks very similar, just no stripes and, well, actually much smaller. Uh, I would say an average is probably between, say, two and five pounds. Uh, a 10 pound is pretty solid fish. And, uh, well, 20 pounds really exist in the dreams of anglers. <laughs> um, <laughs> more in the south, you still have the sea bass, like in the Mediterranean Sea, uh, Portugal, uh, Spain, where you have both Atlantic and uh, the Mediterranean for Spain. Uh, you have two other fish. You have the blue fish. So same blue fish as uh, we can catch here, for example, in Florida or in Massachusetts. And there's also the leer fish. The leer fish is actually the only big carangid. So it's uh, relative to the jacks. Beautiful fish, quite finicky. Uh, actually, for those of you who've been fishing for uh, rooster fish in Costa Rica, for example, you know that the rooster fish quite often can come behind your top water, follow, goes, you know, swim right and left, dive, disappear, sometimes come back, not always. Well, the leer fish has exactly, exactly the same type of, of action and chasing behavior, which makes it extremely fun to catch. And it goes large. I mean, the world record, give or take, is I think 65 or maybe 68 pounds. So definitely can grow in large size. So Top water action in salt water in, salt water in Europe is definitely a very important thing. And in fresh water, you have the perch. So for those of you who know the yellow perch right here uh, in the US or in Canada, you know they quite rarely bite on top water. Well, it turned out their cousins that live in Europe and in Russia are the exact opposite. They're fantastic top water predator fish. And then the, the pike, which is very similar, the same northern pike, as uh, we do have again in, in the US and, uh, and in Canada, is quite active, especially early in the morning, uh, usually um, like in the spring or early summer on top water. So, so that's why when uh, Xorus came with those two lures, there were a number of different lures on the market. And actually, uh, they hit the ground and run right away because they made two lures that complement very much each, each other. So let's go. First with the, the Pachinko. And if you may wonder why am I talking about those, well, it just turned out we pass uh, deals with Xorus. Xorus and its owner of the company, Ultimate Fishing, actually is the exclusive distributor of Ben of Angler lures in all Europe, you know, 20 some countries. Um, well, you know, England is gone, so with Brexit. And we turn to be the exclusive also distributor for all the Xorus lures for the entire Americas, so North you know, Central and South Americas. So let's start with this guy that's named the Pachinko. The Pachinko, as you can see, is extremely well, I mean, you see the shape. It's a pencil bait, but in fact, it have a little curve underneath the belly. That little curve is the key thing because when you walk that bait, you literally can, on a slow, with the right movement and, and slow retrieve, you can literally have a 180 degree, basically keeping your top water on the same spot. So when you fish, for example, for largemouth bass, there are times where you want a chasing action where they are really reactive um, and they bite when something moves fast. But there are times they stay on a spot and you need the bait to stay on the spot. And most top water bait, when they do the walking the dog, they must go forward. Well, the asturi with the right rod twitch um, makes that 180 degree, moves a lot. The mouth have, have a little bit of a cup, so it does do a great popping at the same time, but you can keep it on the top. They are very, very well balanced. 
cast very well, really. They are some of the most longest casting bait out there. The finish also is very beautiful. I'm not sure if the camera can capture that very well, but they are really are high-end finish. They have a full wire, by the way. So they cast very, very well, very attractive, make a lot of splashing, can stay on the spot, can fish very fast. And basically, you have three different sizes. This guy is the smallest. That is the 100 millimeter. By the way, I just want to highlight also that the two treble hook are relatively close on the back. That's also part of why you can have such a, a wide opening walking the dog. And um, that really helps a lot because you have less drag. Some of our top water will have uh, a treble hook more in the front and the action will not be as good. When you try those, you, you'll be amazed. I was honestly, and I know those lure for a long, long time. So the 100 millimeter, the 125, so 100 is definitely the very finest one if you really want to fish light line, wherever you fish for smallmouth, largemouth, uh, sea trout, redfish. The 125 is obviously the most go-to. It's a size that does a bit everything. And the largest in the range is the 140, definitely uh, made for larger fish, or at least when the fish are looking for a bigger prey. For longer distance, obviously it's heavier than the 100. There's a pretty nice difference in size and weight, of course. So that's why this guy with three different size really is really great when you need to have that popping action, wide walking the dog, really great for that. Now, the next bait, Patrick, can I ask you a question about the last one really quick? Oh, yeah. Um, I did notice, uh, and I have had a chance to use that, uh, the Pachinko, a couple of times. Um, it does cast amazing, um, for sure. Uh, mm -hmm. When it sits in the water, well, when it hits the water, it goes down pretty deep. Um, I don't know because it's so weighted at the back end, but yeah. then it also floats basically like so. Yeah. Um, is there a particular way to work it? So, it, it, I mean. So if you just want to pop it, because that's one of the great things, and that's why they opted the cast distance by having enough weight. Let me show you the lighter one because it's a seafood color. So maybe you can see, I'm, I'm afraid it's a bit blurry, but yeah, you can no, see there's okay. a big bead and there's a piece of lead basically right here. So they, they op they've optimized the amount of weight that was inside the bait for that long distance. And when it sits like this, when you just want to make one pop at a time, just make one pop and go with the rod tip down. You know, very short and down. And in that case, because the, the angle of the lure, sorry, the angle of the lure, then it eats very badly the top and make pretty big bubble. You, you'll be surprised if you do that thing, uh, how big of a bubble you can get with such a small bait. And that's thanks to the, the angle that you just highlighted it up. So it's pretty much like this when it sits uh, and stops in the, in the water. Okay. <laughs> so very good. I mean, come with any question. Uh, I'm here to, to share with you guys. That's definitely the goal. So the second one is called the Asturi. So the Asturi come in four different sizes. That's the teeny guy, the 90 millimeter, absolutely beautiful when you want to make a very long cast. So if you want to compare the, one nine, the, the 90 millimeter Asturi and the 100 millimeter, here it is. You know, so obviously the uh, the pachinko is a bit longer, but because the asturi is a bit rounder, for say for the same length, in fact that one is heavier and still f floating top water. So absolute long distance. It's more subtle. So when you walk it, you can walk it with the rod tip just up enough that it does the walking the dog on the top and make a very nice wake, or you can work it with twitching and jerking on the side, and in that case it, it will dive and you have a darting motion underneath. And the last thing you can do, you can have a slow to medium steady retrieve and it just dive like half inch or one inch and it have a little bit of a roll, very little bit of a roll. For those of you who fish in very shallow water for uh, sea trout and um, uh, redfish, there are sometimes that is the key. That is the key and for those of you who know the, the stick shad for my previous Seville brand, uh, the stick shad floating or suspending have that fantastic um, opportunity that when it was, uh, when you are facing very finicky reds, that was the ticket was to cast and just have that slow retrieve. You can do that with this guy. So I see a picture, um, a question right now from Anthony. So Anthony is asking basically, what is the weight of the 90 millimeter? So <laughs> if I don't lose it, all right. So this guy, 90 millimeter is basically 14 grams. So that's, for a floating lure, that's pretty decent given it's 
pretty small size. So if you have 8, 10, 12 pound line, that's really great. Makes really long cast. Now, the next one size up, the 110. 110 is absolutely beautiful. That's one of the two sizes I like the most for a very wide range of options. You know, the 90, I will use more likely if fish really target very small prey. If I target smaller predator as well, but the 110 and even the one size up, which is the 130, definitely are the two size that will fit most of your needs. You know, whether you fish bass in freshwater, if you fish calico, if you fish redfish, trout, sea trout, uh, snook, I mean, a lot of fish, schooling, uh, schooly, um, striped bass also. And again, they really cast super, super, super well. And the last size is the 150. So the, the biggest, if you want to compare, here's the 90, here's the 150. So obviously the, the 150 is a much bigger bait, much bigger bait. So if you have heavier line, if you target bigger fish, you want to make longer cast, uh, that's really the one to go. If you really want to go striped bass, calicos, uh, big bass, you know, like in May in California, when you have those cool of five pound, eight pounds, sometimes bass in open water, you need to make a long cast. Well, that's, that is the bait. That is the bait, the 150. So two different baits from Xorus, the Pachinko, that long, that, that guy, that's a pencil bait and this Asturi. Really complement each other. One of four size, one of three size. And there's a range of color, and some color are more freshwater with you know typical freshwater hook, and those the other one have the saltwater hooks. Yeah, and again, I, I popped up the uh, the web page for those uh, bandofanglers.com, and you can see all of them, uh, all the different sizes and descriptions and the whole bit right there. So uh, and I really like to share one thing to finish and and, and, and give the time. Uh, for you to go on with, with the show. But I've been designing lure all my life. Uh, I guess some people know that, not everybody, of course, but some people know that. <laughs> so for me, it was really something important to say I'm okay and willing to endorse and because they have such great quality lures, because they are that good that I'm like, okay, I'm okay somehow to put my name, to associate my name with those bait, because really, if I were to design those bait, and actually that one, very funny, years ago in the many, many drawing of prototype I've made, and I've not made, I've not produced the prototype of everything, but I made the prototype that are pretty much the same shape. So the day I saw that, I was, okay, makes sense. Someone have the same kind of idea. And I'm doing it very, very soon. That's why I put my name on those. They really are fantastic, fantastic top water bait. I strongly recommend you guys, if you like top water action, no matter if you fish fresh or salt water, I strongly recommend you to give a try to that Xorus brand. It's really a fantastic brand, truly. And again, you can, you can see them all at abandofanglers.com. Patrick, thank you. thank you so much again. We will see you, you again next Tuesday. We'll see you next week, guys. Have a great day and a great show, Jim. Thank you so all much. Right, right. Take me. care. Wow, <laughs> Patrick jams in a lot of information really fast. And again, if you look at the website, you'll be able to see all that stuff. And it's always so fun to have Patrick on here. Again, uh, the discount codes, I'll pop that up really quick. And uh, also for people who do par participate, share this thing, uh, ask questions, all that, you have a chance to win that $150 gift assortment of lures hand selected by Patrick Sabeel. So uh, make sure you... Uh, play along with us here. <laughs> so with no further ado, uh, again, we air uh, full episodes of the Kayak Fishing Show here, the older episodes. And uh, on this episode today from season seven, episode four, uh, was one of our uh, trips with my friend, Esteban Gutierrez from Blackbeard Fishing Company. Esteban, what's happening, man? How you doing, Jim? Hi. Thanks for having me on the show and hello to everybody. I'm, I'm glad to see so many people are connecting. Yeah, so um, just straight up, I mean, it's, you're gonna laugh actually because <laughs> I, when I when I was queuing up this video, I don't know what I was thinking. Cause I, I mean, I don't speak Spanish, but I've been around Spanish. I know pronunciation, all that. I totally screw up how to say Aguila de Osa. Yeah, you do. I think I <laughs> or something. No, but you, you you got you got a lot better. It's not that hard. It's Aguila de Osa. Just, Aguila. 
awesome. Well, it, whatever it does, it doesn't mm -hmm. sound right. <laughs> yeah. But so, uh, what, what's your deal um, with Costa Rica? What's your history down there? What do you got going on down there? Well, I was born and raised in Costa Rica, so obviously I went back to my place of birth to uh, to fish. It is in Costa Rica you find some of the best fishing in the world, and it's also one of the places that has the most variety, most diversity of fishing species. I actually just recently found out there's trout and mountain streams in Costa Rica, which is something that I haven't done yet, but you know, for the fly anglers, it's pretty pretty fun. Um, we started going to Costa Rica to to guide years ago and it all started with kayak fishing and that's when you and i met and and, and i invited you to go to to this uh southern part of costa rica we worked with the board of tourism at that time and they insisted that we visited drake bay they wanted to promote that area and that was actually my first time going there and right. um, yeah. it was it was because i wanted to take you to the other side of the peninsula which is in the uh, puerto jimenez area and um and that was the original plan, but we ended up going to Drake Bay and stayed at Aguila de Osa and it paid off because we had a great time. I mean, we caught a lot of fish that trip. Yeah. And, and the thing is, you know, it wasn't like we were going to a kayak fishing destination. Uh, we were going to, which is basically, a, it, it's a ecotourism destination more than anything mm -hmm. else. Yeah. And, you know, fishing is not their number one focus. So we kind of had to figure it out. And, you know, there's always, whenever you go to a new location, there's a certain amount of learning curve. But once we figured that place out, man, we got some really good quality fish. Yeah, we got lucky. We got lucky because we hooked up with some of the best captains in the area and they put us on fish right away. Uh, but that area, as far as sports fishing goes, there are two large boats that operate in Drake Bay. And then if you go further south, uh, actually further north, into the river, you get to a town called Sierpe, and then you find a lot of fishing captains, but they fish out of smaller boats, center consoles, which is not normally what a tourist would look like, would look for. As far as kayak fishing goes, I think we, we put that place on the map because um, even Brad, the owner of Aguila de Osa, told us, you know, he had a couple of kayaks there and then and some of his guests would use them, but never for fishing. And, and we were the first ones to actually do kayak fishing and, and, and take it to the level that we took it to in, in that trip. Yeah. And, and like I said, the place really does specialize in ecotourism. Mm -hmm. It's a special place though. I mean, to the point where I did this trip with you, I went again, I brought my family down and we spent a week down there for Christmas. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it's a special operation. Uh, the people are wonderful. The food is ridiculous mm -hmm. i mean it is ridiculously good uh mm -hmm. short walk into town kind of cruise around there great beaches uh the natural life um absolutely amazing i mean it's it's uh it's a, an amazing amazing place and yeah, um, it was actually also a big snorkeling and diving destination because of Cano island which is right far my, my family and i did that tour uh when we were down there and you did? Just, yeah nice. yeah got to do all the stuff yeah. and uh it, it's such a beautiful area and what brad has done with that with his lodge particularly that dining area i mean just the fact that i i think one of the things is really cool it kind of kicks your butt when you first get there <laughs> there's, there's no air conditioning yeah there's no he said, air he said he he made it a point to say why he doesn't want air conditioning in the rooms there are no windows it's, it's, uh, it's mesh, it's, it's, the it's windows are screened. And he said that if he put air conditioning in the rooms and, and close the rooms with windows, he would take away from the experience. And it's true because the way it is located at the foot of the mountain, you get that ocean breeze coming in and you, it, it just hits all the rooms just perfectly. It's the way it is designed. I mean, the lodge, the way it is designed. And, it, and it, I was never hot. Well, I was in the room and even at night and then and at the hardest part of the day, I was never hot. Yeah, and it, it's a very hot area. It's it's it's, it's humid. It, it's hot. It's hot. It's. <laughs> I mean, of course, like I say, there's always that getting acclimated to it, and you first get there, and they give you a cocktail, a welcome cocktail, and a, and a wet frozen towel. rag, a frozen yeah. towel, yeah. to put on you because you are hot and humid, and then you climb Mount Everest to get to <laughs> your room, <laughs> or it sure feels like that. 
you know, when it's hot and humid, you're not used to it yet. And you got to schlep into your stuff. Although they schlep all your gear up for you. They don't let you touch anything. Mm -hmm. You climb up there and then you get to your room and you have this ridiculous view. And as you said, Brad says, you know, he doesn't want the air conditioning because then he wouldn't hear all the wonderful birds and the natural, you know, life that's going on outside and the mm -hmm. howler monkeys and the capuchins and spider monkeys and the macaws. I mean, just there's so much life there. Like I said, the fishing's a bonus to me. I mean, at that mm -hmm. place, the fishing really is a bonus. And that's why I brought my family there. I knew when I went there that first time, I'm like, my family would love this place. The only thing you got to do is before you leave the room to go to the dock, sit down for a minute and go over everything you need to bring down because you don't want to <laughs> head back up. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You do not. And it, because most of the time, if you forgot something, you got to the bottom, you're like, ask. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> Get it. <laughs> Who needs platters anyway? Who needs hooks? <laughs> so with the further ado, we need to get this episode rolling. So uh, everybody, please uh, give us your questions and we'll answer them, answer them on the next commercial break. But uh, again, please participate. Share this with your friends. We really, really appreciate it. And let's get this episode rolling. This week on the Kayak Fishing Show, we are at Drake's Bay, Costa Rica. We've hooked up with my buddy Esteban Gutierrez of Blackbeard Fishing Company, and we're at Agla de Osa Lodge. This place is incredibly beautiful and very fishy. Stick around. It's going to be a great show. This week on Jackson Kayak's Kayak Fishing Show, Jim is joined by Esteban and Dre from Blackbeard's Fishing Company for a week in Costa Rica off the coast of the Osa Peninsula. By land, it takes about five hours from the San Jose Airport, that's the uh, Juan Santa Maria Airport. Um, or you could catch a 35 to 40 minute flight into Palmar Sur, which is a town about an hour and a half from here. Once you get to that airport, it's a 30 minute drive to a town called Sierpe, where you will be picked up by a boat, a river boat. And then from then on, it's about an hour and a half out to the river mouth and then up the coast to get here. So we are in one of the most remote areas in Costa Rica that you can get to. Yeah, this is an amazing piece of land. Um, it's um, it's south of Costa Rica, Southern Pacific. It's one of the most bio-intense areas of, of the world and of Costa Rica. To put it in perspective, Costa Rica has 6% of the world's biodiversity and Diosa has around 2.5% of the world's biodiversity. This is a tiny piece of land in the South Pacific of, of Costa Rica. So we're very, very, uh, it's very rich on animals and, 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 and all these lush that we have here. Before the guys head out to the lodge, they make a stop to check out Costa Rica's newest UNESCO heritage site, home of the pre-Columbine Stone Spears. We're here in Finca Seis, um, home of the uh, pre-Columbine Spears in Costa Rica. This is the World Heritage, our latest World Heritage. It was declared in... June I totally forgot about this part. <laughs> uh, and it's pretty unique uh, place of our destination. So if you think about this, these things have been here for hundreds and hundreds of years, handmade, and they're a perfect sphere. I mean, 
I couldn't do this with all the power tools I own. It's absolutely amazing. <laughs> my theory, alien marble bag. They drop it, and they're all over here. When we come back, the guys get their first day on the water, and Costa Rica never lets you down. The rooster, it's not that big. <laughs> he was just angry. I love catching rooster fish. <laughs> that, that, those few, um, few first days that we were there, they were really special. I don't know if you know, but that trip actually changed my life, right? Yeah, and I forgot. I forgot Dre was with us too. I mean, like I said, I I don't generally go back and watch these things before we air them. So I, it's always for me, it's always reliving the whole thing, which is always fun. Uh, true. He got there a day late. Yeah, and that that boat ride. Mm -hmm. uh, we did that kind of tour and saltwater crocs and er, the iguanas. It's just such a cool, cool. From place. the time we left that dock in the river, because we headed towards the lagoon, not the opposite side from the ocean. We headed up river. And within the first 15 minutes, I think we saw three different species of monkeys. We saw a big, a big crocodile and all kinds of birds. And 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 that's pretty special. I mean, when we went to the Amazon, for example, we, we didn't see, I saw a sloth, but you don't believe me. But in 15 <laughs> minutes in Costa Rica, we saw a lot, a lot of different. Yeah, and, and as much, and I've said this so many times, as much as I love Panama, mm -hmm. and I love going down and fishing Panama, Costa Rica has embraced ecotourism so much more mm -hmm. that it, the, what you will see in a short time in Costa Rica compared to Panama is, is amazing. Yeah. You know, where Panama has embraced the canal. <laughs> Costa yeah. Rica has embraced ecotourism mm -hmm. and, and it, it, it shows in how clean the country is and um, how biodiverse it is. When you just look at the pride too, that every guy, every 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 person that we encountered, from the from the people that drove the boats, that took us to the lodge, the water taxis, people at the lodge, the way they cook, everything, everybody there is is so into into nature, and 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 they protect it and they keep it clean. Yeah, for sure, for sure. So let's. Yeah. Uh, we have uh, Chris saying hello from here in San Diego. Thanks for joining us, man. Uh, I like this comment a lot from kayak the kayak fishing tales. Uh, the best kayak fishing show on the web and, and on TV. Let's go. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Rolo jo joining us from uh, Houston, Texas again on Kayak Fishing Tales. Getting a lot more people on from Kayak Fishing Tales, and I really like to see that. Like I said, if you haven't done so yet, subscribe to Kayak Fishing Tales if you want to be notified. Um, Tati. Uh, my wifey. Oh, is it? Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Well, she's, uh, I didn't realize she was actually uh, down in Costa Rica. That's what I told you. It changed my life. Yeah. She is related to one of the captains that we fished with. And then that's, that's how she was introduced to me. I did not realize that. That is that is awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, how do you spell it? Oh, that, that was the Pachinko. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Again, for that stuff, uh, a band of anglers com. You guys can answer all your questions about the lures there. Uh Dave O'Donovan from Ireland. Thank you so much for joining us from Ireland. That is awesome. awesome. I would really like to go there. Yeah, me too. Uh, and da, 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 scroll through these really quick. Is there rattle? Yes. Uh, da, da. We've got a greetings from Mike Tavares. How you doing, Mike? And well, we'll get back to some of these other ones on our next commercial break. Let's get the episode going. I need to skip across the blank. <laughs> Welcome back. This week, Jim is joined by the guys from the Blackbeard Fishing Company for a week of fishing in Costa Rica. The base of operations this week is the incredible Aguila de Osa on Drake Bay. Aguila de Osa is not your typical fishing destination featuring top-notch accommodations, five-star cuisine, and the friendliest staff we've ever seen. Topped off with being minutes away from some of the best fishing in the world. We're at Aguila de Osa, and 
this lodge, hotel, inn, whatever you want to call it, is situated right on the hill, kind of buried into the jungle a little bit, overlooking the water. The rooms are all surrounded by beautiful plants and flowers, birds everywhere, lizards, iguanas. Just a, a beautiful, beautiful spot and really, I mean, a top shelf place. They, they have taken everything into consideration. The service is in, incredible and the location couldn't be better. For all those that, that want to come down to the, the tropics, everybody wants that air conditioning, but I can't put the air conditioning because I want to wake up with the birds, the animals, the sound. So uh, for me, it's just a nature lodge. I have 13 rooms, uh, nine standard rooms, and uh, a junior suite and a suite. And uh, for me, uh, it's big enough, and uh, uh, it's a fun place to hang out. There's just something about waking up at a place like this that is special. I mean, you may hear howler monkeys waking you up. You might hear uh, the macaws going over the top. I mean, parrots and, and all kinds of birds and insect life. And, you know, so it's a nice slow wake up unless you hear a howler monkey, which screams and startles you out of your bed. Um, and it's a nice and relaxed and you walk out the front door and it's warm and humid, but so green and you can hear the water just outside the rooms. I'm a very lucky man, we get to travel a lot, visit a lot. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna tell you right now, Aguila de Osa is right there at the top as far as location as far as amenities, um, but more importantly, I think it's in, because of the people. All settled in and geared up, the team hits the water with dreams of monster roosters in the boiler rocks. I'm just gonna pause it right there for just a second. You know, people will always see us, you know, we'll have boats on here. Um, these all these spots for fishing are just right around the corner from the lodge. Uh, you don't need the boat. Mm -hmm. The reason we have a boat is we're shooting a TV show, <laughs> you know, and so we always will have a boat, a support boat with us. So for our camera guys, because for him to have to shoot off a kayak is always difficult and we need to maximize our time, you know, get from spot to spot sometimes. Um, so that's the main reason for the boat. Now there was uh, one spot that we went that was quite a ways offshore. There was a reef that the boat took us out to. Uh, I went there on my last trip there and we were, oh man, Cuberas and, and Dorado on this reef was just amazing. That spot but, is called Jorona. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's by the waterfall. And um, absolutely amazing, absolutely amazing. But again, they have the boats available if you want to go sport fishing. Uh, if you they have the boats if you want to have a do it as a mothership supported things. These kayaks are there. Uh, we left kayaks at the location, so uh, if you ever want to go to Aguila Dosa, but again, that's why we have the boat is for our camera guys and just to make it easier on us because we're trying to maximize our time on the water to make the best show possible. So anyway, just wanted to pause for that since the boat's right there, and that boat has been totally rebuilt since the last time I was there. I think it's for sale. That's a guy cracking. Uh, the reason it's a, such a good boat for the type of fishing we're doing, doing a lot of trolling, putting in a lot of miles, heavy current. <laughs> I think I lost a fish there. Yeah, I remember that. Big, ready to go. It's got the crate on it, the tackle boxes. So you put that thing in the water and you are ready to fish. Well, not too little, but oh, he had a follower too. That's not my normal boat. No, I don't have my tools out where they should be. It's ready to go. Thank you. 
I think that was the first one of the trip, Jim. That's, you broke the ice. Yeah. And he is literally choking on this thing. And the way it's hooked is right. He had like a right mullet down his throat. I can't do much mm -hmm. other the line. So he'll be able to swallow it down now. It was belly hooked. <laughs> so, yeah. kitchen the babies. Yeah. <laughs> oh, big old needlefish. God, I hate those things. <laughs> Freaking giant needle fish. The first needle fish you catch is always fun, and after that, you hate them. And they won't leave you alone. If there's one, there's plenty more. Turn off your clicker, <laughs> idiot. He's just pointed in the wrong direction. Stay tuned. When we come back, Esteban and Jim continue their first day on the water, and we encounter some wild creatures in the jungle. You got off to a slow start, remember? Yeah, yeah. Well, oh. again, like like I always say, you know, it's, it's always that mm -hmm. that you figure it out that first day, kind of figuring it out when you don't have. Even if you have guys there who fish. Mm -hmm. If they don't kayak fish and understand how we do things and and what we're able to do, my, most guides, uh, if you go to a place that has never seen kayak fishing, just get blown away when they say, when they see the size of fish we can actually land in kayaks. So it, it's always, it's like I said, it always is that little bit of a learning curve when you first get to a location, but that's that's a lot of the fun. Um, we have a unknown um, thinking about going for some rooster fish by Porta Penasco, Rocky Point. Any chance you have fished there already? I've never been there. I can't afford to go to Costa Rica. Rocky Point is a few hours drive from where I'm from. Um, Where's Puerto Penasco? Is that yeah, that's the thing is I'm not really sure where that is. Uh, you're not really going to see rooster fish until you get down into southern Baja. That's where you first start to see them. Um, I used to guide down in the East Cape, which is just north of Cabo, uh, inside the Sea of Cortez, and we would catch a lot of big roosters there. And you'd get them a little bit north of there, but uh, like you know, you don't see them here in California, anything like that. It's it's you have to get into the warmer waters of um, Baja Sur. It's so, in the in the inner side of the Baja uh, California Peninsula, so there, it's a Gulf. I don't know, there could be some in there. Well, if it's how far down? Well, it's on the on the inside of the peninsula. Right. Well, inside the Sea of Cortez. Right. Yeah. Correct. And it's um, it's just south of Mexicali, in the border. Oh no! You got to get you got to get a ways down. Um, yeah. Get down to La Paz. <laughs> and explain, Jim, how you mentioned to me that the fish, the rooster fish in Baja, fight different from the rooster fish in Costa Rica. Well, it, it really depends on where you were. Um, like I said, in in Baja, where we catch them, we catch a lot of them in right next to the beach, right next to sandy beaches, and they will fight out. And, and they stay close to the surface, and they fight out, right? Right. Yeah. Um, where we were catching, where particularly where we caught the biggest ones, mm -hmm. we caught them very deep. Yeah. Um, and so we were having to get up over it. I remember that was, and this might be in the second episode, <clears throat> it was um, a lot of current. So you, you'd paddle up to the spot, drop down, and then hope you got a fish on that drop, and then you'd have to paddle back up. Yeah. But they, they were much deeper fish than what we normally would catch uh, down in Baja, at least the area of Baja where I used to fish. 
that it was deep drop offs, but the fish were always cruising just along the outside of the surf. Um, black flag fishing, all this talk of warm wa tropical waters makes me wonder, have you guys ever done a trip to Alaska for the bottom fishing salmon? Yeah, I've been to Alaska four times kayak fishing and it's amazing. Uh, the, the, the bottom fishing halibut, rockfish, lingcod, the salmon, it's just an amazing place to go fishing. Uh, yeah, definitely cold water. Uh, if you, uh, I usually wore uh, lightweight breathable waders but with the wading belt, PFD, all that. But uh, if you're going to be up there a lot, if you have a dry suit, that's definitely the way to go. Um, and of course, PFD and know how to do a self rescue. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, what's the name of our intro song? That is Going Fishing by Brock Zeman. Um, we used him during uh, some of our episodes as just music in the episodes. And he had um, a song called Rotten Tooth that I really liked. It just, just something about the sound of it. I really, really liked. And um, so I asked my producer, who is a friend of his, to see if he could make a song for our show that kind of had that feel. And that's how we got our, our show. So it is Brock Zeman. Um, yes, Michael, I'm a very, very lucky man. I don't feel so lucky this last year because I haven't been able to go anywhere. <laughs> I've been on lockdown for a year. I mean, literally right now, this time last year, I was in Thailand um, with my wife on a vacation. And then right when I got back, I went to the Bahamas and that was the last time I've traveled and shot from our show. So really glad that we finally have one on the books ready to go. Pamela Worth, how are you? Thanks for joining us. I really appreciate it. Let's keep the episode going. On an incredible five-day fishing adventure in the Osa Peninsula. It's day one, and already the guys have managed to find a few fun fish. Like you lost a fish there too. The I did. That was my first hookup. So if you were to ask me what was the most important piece of gear on this trip, I honestly got to say it's the clothes. <laughs> I mean, it's raining now. It's been hot and incredibly humid. I mean, it's so important to have nice clothes that are light and dry quickly, keep the sun off. Yeah, I've worn shorts, but I'll spend a lot of time in pants, keep that sun off me. And the buff, the buff is a savior. Keep that sun off my face all day. It takes a while to get used to that thing over your mouth, but after a while, yeah, we're all used to them now. Man, it is mm, yeah. for that baking sign. Bring the right clothes on a trip like this, you'll really appreciate it. Little Jack. Mm -hmm. Gotta be really careful because Jack's gonna fight the sharp little tail. So I'm gonna get him back in the water real quick. Hope I'm not that way. <laughs> Oh man, I just want to go fishing now. I'm just watching this. I just want to go fishing. You know, I was just there last week, right? Yeah. I got that big grouper. Yeah, that was a big fish. Yeah. I had to uh, jump in the water to help him on the boat. One guy, I was pushing, one guy was pulling. Oh, jeez. <laughs> it was huge. A lot of grunting and groaning here. I don't want to give him the rocks. <laughs> I've never had roosters fight down. That was the first big one you got. Uh, 
Strong fish. There we go. It's not that big. <laughs> he was just angry. It is not that big. Strong fish, man. Good fish. He fought a lot bigger than he is, I tell you. Well, I got a rooster, had a couple of break-offs, just had a silly little uh, needle fish. I'm gonna need a new bait, so join us after this commercial for more great action down here in Costa Rica. Yeah, like you said, um they uh they were fighting deep they were fighting down mm -hmm. which like i said every place where i've fought them before they they always run out and they take you on just an incredible sleigh ride welcome and back. it's always they a harder fight when the they fight down costa rica mm -hmm. with the guys from blackbeard yeah. that the first day i don't remember at what time we headed out but now that i've been going back quite a bit it's always the morning bite and the afternoon bite and we even made a joke when we were there remember fish eat at three Right. Like every day at 3 p.m., the bite will turn on. And it's still that way. <laughs> uh, let's see. Thanks for the info. I looked it up on maps and it shows it runs a bit south of San Felipe, Mexico. Mm -hmm. Oh, I live in Arizona. Wow. Um, yeah, you got to get a little bit farther south if you want roosters. And generally speaking, for southern Baja, uh, the best time is like May, June, July. Uh, that's the, the three months where I've always had our best and biggest. It seems like there's like down in the East Cape and there's roosters there all the time. But for the big ones, it was always like May, June, July. Um. Julio, is there a reason you haven't swapped to a pedal drive kayak? Uh, because I like to paddle. I mean, I really enjoy paddling. Um, pedal kayaks are great, but I enjoy paddling. And they certainly like, well, uh, situationally, if, if when we were fishing that water that with that ripping current and trying to stay in spots, a pedal kayak would have been awesome. Mm -hmm. I mean, that would have been the perfect ap application for it. And so certainly they, they have their uses. I just, I'm a paddler. I love paddling. Um, if you're going to be a paddler, and I say this all the time, if you're going to be a paddler, though, take the time to learn to be a paddler and learn proper technique because it makes all the difference in the world. And don't go cheap on your paddle. Buy the best paddle you can because it does make a big difference. And a good quality paddle like a Werner Callista that I paddle with makes a huge difference. When you have that in your hand all day, it makes a big difference. <laughs> Excuse me. Alfredo Lopez saying, great show. Thank you, man. I really appreciate that. I appreciate all the comments. I appreciate all the shares, all the thumbs up. That's what helps us get the word out and gets us out there to more people. And of course, <laughs> thanks to these sponsors that are scrolling across the bottom. Uh, visit them and that way they know that people like us <laughs> and hola from Argentina. That's nice. one I still need to go. Got to go to Argentina and go catch golden Dorado. So mm -hmm. that is definitely, that's, I would say golden Dorado is probably at the top of my to-do list at this point. I know a guy Your fishing company. So far the guys have hugged the shoreline and hooked uh, a few roosters, but yeah. today they have a chance to head offshore. Day two. 26 miles out looking for some uh, selfish and some mahi mahi. So we make our destination after we had a nice nap there. Uh, we start launching the boats. This morning we uh, decided that we wanted to go after some billfish. There's a, a ridge quite a few miles offshore, uh, about 26 miles from the lodge. 
So uh, we jumped in the big boat, threw the kayaks in there, and we're gonna go start trolling for billfish. Right when we pulled, right when we pulled up to the bank, we saw a jumping sailfish. So the signs are good. We're hoping we can get on some. I'm the last guy in the water. I get set up. I get my bait in. About two minutes within that time of my bait getting the water, and I was actually still sitting the rod drag when this happened. A few clicks went off. Then there's a big splash. And we didn't know who was hooked up. And the next thing you know, my boat's being dragged. And here we are hooked up to this nice uh, mahi mahi. And of course, Dre it's hated it because he only Dream likes fly fishing. My wits about my <laughs> and he wasn't a cruise dwell. I was excited because when, he, when I realized how big he was, it, I had to calm myself down and be smart about what I was doing and keep the tension on him and constantly keep him in front of me to where I can keep the boat stable and take control instead of him taking control. You know, it's the first time and only time I've seen Dre hold a spinning rod. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. He hates it. <laughs> I know. He was pretty adamant about only throwing the fly. Yeah. Okay. Hold on. <laughs> Dude, that is a fucking piece. That was a nice Dorado. It was, yeah. I believe we ate that one uh, later. No, one night, the same night, yeah. We're good. eating good tonight. crazy how calm the sea looks. I remember when we were trolling and the waves were huge. The captain here is very noisy. Yeah, very big rollers. He has been mm -hmm. fishing this area since he was 17 years old. Uh, and that's uh, at a professional level. At, at some racing. point during that session, uh, that offshore session, numbers. I hooked a sailfish. And uh, so but it was never on camera, so we did a lot of so I don't even know if we ever mentioned it. Rocks. I think you jumped them uh, once. Shore, yeah, right? he jumped and then, came and then, on yeah, through the door. Uh, towards some rock formations on the water, and that's when the day got good. We started getting hit after hit after hit. It was 3 p.m. <laughs> that's Nice, no, AJ. Yeah, yeah. nice, AJ. That's nice, AJ, too. I was trying to get one last week and we couldn't. We wanted to eat some AJ. Just now, we woke up at five in the morning and we heard about some snook in the river. And, uh, oh, awesome. you know, boats normally try to go up there quietly, but they still have to throw and and motored the way up to the spot. We were there on kayaks and those fish didn't even know we were there. Uh, we made some good casts, came up short on the, on, on, the, on the catching part, but it was like being on top of an aquarium. It was amazing. We saw all kinds of creatures. We also saw some alligators. Uh, so, you know, it's not all about the catching sometimes, at least not to me. Uh, when you're in a place like this, you, you get to see some amazing things. Uh, and just the first half hour we were out, we saw, Two cans, hawks, um, some beautiful butterflies. We saw the alligator. We saw the snook swimming right under the boat, under the kayak. It's amazing. It really is something else. The guys call it a day and head back to the lodge. Late that night, we get a special surprise as local entomologists take us to see a creature. That I remember that. Oh, that's right. I remember that. That was awesome. And we're a planus. The one biologist says, and it's true, you know, when your your hand is right next to it and it turns into the snake and starts doing this, you, you know, instinctively you want to pull your hand away, even though you, you know it's a caterpillar. Well, well, these are the feet. But what's cool is it, it pulls them in when it, yeah, when it turns into a snake. After an amazing midnight hike, the guys head to bed. 
but our adventure is far from over. When next we visit the guys in Costa Rica, big roosters come out to play. I just want to see that fish landed. Oh, I'm going to wait till next week. Next time. <laughs> what an awesome trip. Yeah. And like I said, I mean, just so much, so much to see there and so much life. And let me, all of a sudden, I've got a video playing in my head. There you go. <laughs> um, he like said so much to see the fishing's amazing when i made my last trip there uh we fished all lures um no live bait and getting roosters and dorado on poppers and kubera i mean just i i love i love costa rica it's just just such a a wonderful wonderful place um it looked like there was a couple more crime. um i heard the kayak fishing kind of died out after 2016 do you think it's still worth go for it in 2021? I'm not looking for eight miles offshore, just Lake Pond near shore. Kayak fishing has not died it's off. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, my God. Not at all. There, the, the sport of kayak fishing has done nothing but grow and grow. Uh, not just the salt water, but the biggest growth area really is in the bass fishing aspect of it. You know, everybody's adding motors to their kayaks and um, the bass fishing uh tournaments i mean it, it's done nothing but grow in, in it's been market. categorized as the fastest growing segment of the sports fishing industry yeah i think it still is yeah for sure yeah. and, and mm -hmm. it just keeps growing it's it definitely <laughs> it definitely has a plateau now i would say because california was where kayak fishing really got its start it is more plateaued here um but there's still i mean there's new guys joining this sport every day and, um, you know, guys doing it f for fish, for hoop netting, you know, guys are, I mean, and there's, and the cool thing is now with so many different kayak manufacturers out there, you know, I work with Jackson kayak, but there, there, there's a kayak for everybody. It doesn't matter what mm -hmm. size you are, what your athletic abilities are. There's a kayak out there for you. It's, it's absolutely amazing. Um, I would, I would definitely say this, the sport has, um, died off. <coughs> Excuse me. I wonder where he's riding from. Yeah, it's, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. uh, we have Mahi Mahi in Miami. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Of course, where we are, we call them Dorado. Um, in Baja or in Hawaii, it's Mahi Mahi. Uh, in other places, it's Dolphin. Dolphin. Yeah. It's, uh, it's the fish of many names, but doesn't matter what you call it. It's still delicious. Tastes like chicken. Yeah. If, Dorado are one of those fish that, I mean, they, they're they strong. Mm -hmm. They're acrobatic. So they're super fun to catch. I mean, just watching, they're beautiful and they're delicious. I mean, it, it's that fish has it all. Um, Carlos says, Peninsula de Osa, without a doubt, a paradise. Yeah, and I've been to both ends of the Osa Peninsula and... Uh, the Osa Peninsula is is absolutely a beautiful, beautiful place. And I said uh, Gila de Osa at um, Drake's Bay is just a, a great location. Jim, that that uh, Jose Carlos Chepe is a friend of mine. He's uh, He owns a okay. restaurant in Costa Rica. We got to go visit him. He's oh. a good chef. Awesome. Awesome. Well, like I said, unfortunately, I'm only shooting domestically this year. I know. Uh, because of the whole COVID nonsense. But hopefully we get back on the road and get to go to more of these wonderful remote destinations that I love so much. So Esteban, the, the, the invite is open. If you want to join us for the uh, airing of the episode next Tuesday, uh, I'll be there. same, I'll same love time. It. I'd love to have you on here. That'd be awesome. I really appreciate you being on there and sharing some memories of the trip with me today. Yes, sir. Uh, everybody who has joined us for the show. I really, really appreciate it. It's always, um, 
it's always fun when we get a lot of uh, engagement like this, a lot of questions. And all I ask for you is, again, if you please share these things with your friends so we can continue to grow it. Uh, remember what I was saying about watching it at Kayak Fishing Tales, um, which is the YouTube channel, and subscribing. And that way you get notified of any of the new episodes. Uh, I want to pop up this uh, discount code one more time for uh, a band of anglers for the lures, the Zorus lures that Patrick Zabiel was showing us at the beginning of the episode. You can use that. And remember, for those people who are who participate and share these episodes, um, have a chance at that hand-picked $150 gifts of, gift assortment of lures from Patrick Zabiel. So... Um, nice. that we'll be selecting that after these, uh, six episodes have aired that Patrick is, is joining us on. So anyway, I hope you all have a good day. If you're going out on the water, please be safe. If, particularly if you're down here in San Diego, we've got some really nasty weather for the next few days. If you are going out on the water, please remember to always wear your PFD and keep your paddle right side up and stay in the boat. <laughs>